Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be talking about the new Christmas cards buffs released in Japan, as well as kind of a bit in North America, as well as new Awoken Evolutions for various cards in this first impressions video. So, the first thing on this list is Awoken Archangel Lucifer. So, we need to distinguish that there are two different Lucifers in PAD, and this is the Lucifer that first came out and was probably the most powerful leader in pad at the time because he made you almost play bejeweled with like one combo matching because you couldn't die you charge up gravities and gravity 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 and you eventually win the dungeon you could play like keeper of rainbow for like two hours and maybe manage to win in time maybe maybe not but this lucifer basically fell out of favor quite quickly when new cards were released because he had no attack multiplier and grinding teams were not necessarily the most fun thing after how long. So he kind of fell out of existence. He kind of had new evolution that made him kind of interesting, but not too many people actually utilized him. He could beat Arena 4, but it was a slow and tedious grind. So now we've got back to Awoken Lucifer, Awoken Archangel Lucifer, and let's see if he actually has any capabilities. So he is now bind immune, which is definitely a plus because now his leader skill remains intact. He lost two TPAs, but he gained the big finger. And I'm talking about like this new and powerful time extend awakening. So this new time extend awakening basically is more powerful than the regular one. So it's kind of condensing like two awakenings into one. So we see that he has eight awakenings, but this is only his awoken form, which means that his reincarnated form will probably gain a new one, which hopefully will be another super awakening because I kind of view the big finger as a super awakening because it's essentially a power creep version of the old one. It's a direct replacement. It's just stronger overall. And his active skill changes to dealing 200 times attack to one enemy, but your HP is now halved instead of one, so that can make a difference for certain HP sensitive teams, like say Dark Metatron. And you change the leftmost column to dark, rightmost column to heal orbs. So it could be an interesting active skill to inherit on Dark Metatron teams. It's not as destructive to your own health as before, because obviously you're not going down to one. However, his leader skill changes now. You get two and a half times attack for clearing each wood or dark cross. So he's a color cross leader, but he also has a heart cross mechanic. So he's a color cross, heart cross, bind immune card that actually makes you a column of hearts and a column of dark, which means you actually have two crosses ready made of his active skill, which is a seven turn cooldown. So that's actually a very powerful active skill, especially when you use it for the, this type of team. Now, he does have the potential to have big damage, but... It's hard to say how a cross team, let alone a color cross team, can function nowadays because with giant combo shields, it's going to be challenging. It's interesting for sure, but it's going to be hard to really justify his usage nowadays. But he is definitely an upgrade if you don't want that TPA dark stick, which not many people did at this point in time. We have Awoken Sonata. So Awoken Sonata is a pretty big upgrade from his other form. He has the same orb changer of heart or water to fire, light to hearts, but now instead of enhancing only fire, he enhances heart orbs. So I'll take that as a win overall because we have the ability to enhance two color, two elements now, which can be a big deal for certain teams. Like farming teams may want to have those hard orbs broken, so this enhanced status makes a big difference. As a leader skill, he's a row-based leader. And a heart cross. He's a row heart cross leader. Oh, good gosh. Uh, let me just see. Uh, this is not enough. No, not a leader. No, just don't. Better active skill. I used him as an inherit. Situational sub. Better overall, so I'll take it. Awoken Maida or Keji, whatever you want to call him. He's his, basically his active skill changes. He replaces all orbs, so he's got the board reset which means it removes locked doors at the same time and replaces it down with new orbs. They can match and trigger, so producing combos. But you also get enhanced orbs more likely to appear for three turns. Kind of like a side grade shirt, kind of interesting. I don't know, hard to say. Is it really going to be needed? I don't know, like it's, it's a way to reset the board. We have so many different ways to unlock orbs now. He's not as unique or novel as it used to be. So as an inherit, still situationally useful. Leader skill, three times attack and RCV and six combos. Four plus colors, strike it once. It's still not enough damage. He's a rain, He's a combo-based leader with a recovery multiplier. 81 times is not bad, but no seven combos on himself kind of hurt. 
Three TPAs means he does hit hard, but a seven combo tends to be better, generally speaking. He has guard break, so you think, oh, like the light Cali, dark Cali sort of teams, if you want that sort of thing, or raw dragon, not so, like, hard to really justify it. Can't use him on raw dragon teams, I lied. You can use him on Ragnarok dragon teams. So, situational if you want to use him. Kind of an awkward card, I feel, overall. Leader skill, it might be fun if he was buying Demir and had seven combo instead. But again, five-star Pantheons can only get so strong. Now we have Akachi, and Akachi has the same orb changer of fire to dark, water to hearts, enhances dark and heal orb. So he's like Sonata, you get the double enhancing aspect. Would you want to use him as a sub still? Hard to say. Row teams are kind of an awkward place, maybe you might. He can work on Kami teams, getting the hearts that are now enhanced. So those enhanced hearts can make a big difference in healing if you're playing, say, someone like Kami. Not terrible overall. Leader skill? No... No, it's not. No, it's not a leader. But a much stronger Inherit overall. Same cooldown, so you're basically getting enhanced hard orbs when you didn't beforehand. I'll take that. Christmas Grammarly. Cute and adorable with lots of row, more row awakenings. I think. No, I did lied. She doesn't. Never mind. Nothing changed there. Leader skill. The skill use, the active skill clause is a problem overall because with the active skill clause, you are kind of restricting yourself like to using something like TARDIS, but you don't want to use TARDIS on this team. Six times attack and reduce damage when heart cross occurs. So it is 18 times. 18 times 18 is actually a very large multiplier. So this is a huge multiplier actually overall. So it can be used because the damage is so high and you only technically need to make a heart cross and you get that giant punishing ability if you have a short enough active skill. So you can possibly use it for certain challenges where you can stall appropriately of heart crossing as well as having a low cooldown active skill. So it's actually an interesting evolution overall. Might experiment around with it if you're lucky enough for it. And then there were, it was split into two different posts on PadX. I'll link them in the YouTube description down below. So now we got Christmas Ilmina with the fluffy boots, which is important. They have 100,000 true damage to all enemies, so we like that. You get... Um, a board changer that's a little different now, it's Fire, Light, and Heal Orb. So Ilm Ilmina's beforehand made only boards of Fire and Light. So that's good for ranking dungeons. This board changer is better, generally speaking, because hard orbs tend to be a little nicer to have overall. As a leader skill, it's 7x6 board, 3 times attack light, 2.5 times reduced damage, matching heart orbs in a cross. That's kind of awkward. Not enough damage for heart crosses really to take off. Still, 7x6 is nice because if you're fortunate enough to have Lee, you can use this Ilmina as your 7x6 leader and swap him around. Still a powerful active skill overall. And now we have Christmas Solace. Water to fire, dark to hearts. Change on attribute to fire for two turns. So that's an interesting type of active skill, changing yourself to fire. It's odd, but let's see what their leader skill is. So it's kind of like five times attack fire, one and a half times HP wood. So you need to use red wood cards if you don't have enough health, but you're not going to have good recovery overall. So that's going to be a problem, generally speaking. You get two times attack. It's just not really worth it. 100 times attack with, no, it's not worth it for this type of card as a leader. So it's going to be used as a sub or as an inherit. So as a sub, it's a little awkward in my opinion, just because it's the wrong color most of the time. Like, five out of seven turns, it's the wrong color, so that's going to be a problem. It does have double co-op boost, and now that double co-op boost is actually probably its big selling point. Because in multiplayer or co-op, you're gaining 50% stats twice, so that is actually a large increase overall. And that can make her a desirable base for button farming teams that need a large amount of damage. So you inherit Grimjaws onto her, and she possibly will have the highest... Um, base attack in the game just because of the double seven combo awakenings can open up new applications for button farming so that's i think what her main usage will be for christmas fagin is all orbs of fire water wood light and hearts so everything but dark orbs so it's kind of like a sequoia and tachibana style active reduce enemies health by 20 percent three turn bind recovery so you're doing a lot of things four times attack god and dragon so hp is above 80 percent no, 
for 16. So that actually is a significant, that's quite a high damage multiplier if you're above 80% health, but you don't have any way to return yourself back to full health, which is kind of awkward. He does have skill charge and seven combo awakening. So in theory, you can charge his active skill up kind of quickly, but they seem to be only giving skill charge to characters that have very long base cooldowns, which makes sense because you can technically hasten them up very quickly. So as a leader, it could be interesting and fun to play. You get bonus recovery to help you stay in your health zone, but you're going to have to rely on shields, dam shields, delays, and or um, self-healing active skills to keep your health high enough because if you don't, you're only 16 times damage and that's nothing overall. And then Christmas Venus Looks like the same active skill as her Awoken form or Reincarnated form, something special. Five times attack when matching five connected orbs with one enhance. Reduce damage take, reduce damage by 50% by fire, light, and dark. So as a double Venus leader, you can, double Christmas Venus leader, you get 75% damage reduction, which can help you cheese through a lot of different content of fire, light, and dark. You do have 25 times attack not higher than her reincarnated form so i don't really see why we'd want to run her because her reincarnated form at least is 36 times with a bazillion amount of reduction against light i guess it's not multicolor, but uh no no other cheese team options are better she's just pretty i feel overall buff sakuya gets um all stats to healers so it's not going to be relevant christmas sani gets definitely a bit stronger but still hard. It's mostly just a special inherit on button on farming teams. Limit break and a super awakening. So super awakenings um, are based. Um, we don't have those yet, basically. But they can be limit broken. But only Christmas red Cali red Christmas Cali is the only one you'd ever want to consider limit breaking because she gets a significant improvement overall. So that concludes this first impressions video. So. Christmas collab looks interesting. It should come to North America, all these cards. They announced that Christmas cards got buffed, I think. So I'll do a review on that when that gets a little closer to coming out. So hopefully you all have the best of luck in your own pad adventures. Wish you all a fantastic day and happy puzzling.